Turn the camera around. Might have to clean the camera off. Oh no, she looks good. This is all stuff you should probably do beforehand, but <laughs> we're not that skilled here, so. We've been busy. Yeah, we've been busy getting this monster ready to go. And let's turn our comments on. A lot of systems. Live in chat. There we go. Hey John, how are you? Thanks for coming on. If you guys can hear us okay, just give us the thumbs up, let us know. I'm just making sure that it's uh, working on the TV here. Hello, Stacy. Juicy's with us. Yeah. Juicy. Oh, oh, hey. Hey, John. Here's what Stacy says. All Stacey. right. Come on, TV. You can do it. it John Horner says, hey. Yeah. Hi from. There it is. Now it's working. Hi from Australia. Come New on. South Wales. Right now. Not sure if we can get the live chat to work, but hey, you know, whatever happens, happens. Oh, there we go. Live chat. I think we got it. I'm sure the TV will work. Well, you guys, thanks for tuning in to the live stream. If you're new here, welcome to the lighter side of RC After Dark. If you're not new here, welcome back. This is our behind the scenes look at uh, what goes on here in the shop. Uh, you get the real time mess. You get me pulling my pants up because it's far too hot in here right now. Hello from Atlanta. Howdy Atlanta. Tricky, Tricky Ricky's on. Hello, Tricky Atlanta. Ricky. So we don't have any questions. A um, little summary over the past two weeks. Um, let's see here. Just been busy working on stuff. So. Been working on the F-16 has been the big one. What? I'm back. <laughs> oh, Ward. Nobody really cares about okay, your Ward, sorry. Came. <laughs> Ward came back from vacation. Hey, Ward. Um, we've been working on the F-16 and uh, we're close. So the last video I think is coming out maybe this coming Wednesday, maybe next Saturday, I can't remember. Um, and we've started on the weathering on this thing. So we'll show you guys the weathering. Uh, the engines for the SU-30 arrived, and uh, those are Zykoi 240s. So we did a test run last night and a review of the Zykoi 240s. So that'll be coming out soon. And then today the focus was getting the engines installed in the SU-30 so we can do the test run live with you guys. So one of the engines has been run outside of the plane. Uh, we just like five minutes before we started the live, we primed the engines. Yeah. We, uh, we were gonna do the responsible thing and uh, start the engines like half an hour ago and then pretend that we were starting them for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Didn't work out. No, <laughs> so, no we ran out of time. Yeah, we looked at the clock, we're like, oh dang, it's already a seven o'clock. So um, anyways, yeah, so things have been going well. Got lots of projects in the queue. Um, Sorry about all the ums. This is usually the stuff that I cut out when I do my video editing. Let's see here. We are probably gonna be starting the F-14 very soon. Once these two are done, the SU-30 and the F-16, I would like to get the Rebel Hot finished. I would like to get the BDX finished because I don't think my BDX is the, the crate container for my BDX is scheduled to land May 5th. So I'm gonna finish the BDX that we have here, get that done. Maybe I'll do a condensed version for my plane. Maybe I won't do anything except share pictures with you guys. And of course, maiden flight video and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of been what's going on. Um, we talked about Tucson last live, that was fine. Uh, OV-10 Bronco was today's video. So the Bronco is no longer here. It's off with Joe from RC Custom 3D Printing. Joe is stripping. Uh, painting, glassing, doing all that stuff for the aircraft. And uh, he sent me some pictures a couple days ago and uh, it looks great. The center section of the tail I think is done or primed or whatever. So it looks awesome. And it's gonna be a totally different airplane when it comes back. So looking forward to that. That project probably gonna be another few weeks before we see it back here. So um, that's it. I think that's the updates. What else? I can't think of anything else, Ward. No, think of anything? Well, 
Just what we're going to have to do tonight and get that uh, yeah. 400 in. And so, yeah, the, the plan is to, uh, is to test run this thing. Oh, when you guys see this 400, I tested this 400 the other day by myself. <laughs> that could have been awesome. Yeah, unbelievable. Like, she had me there. For oh, my gosh. So, I was trying to hold the, the, the F-16 back, got it started, throttled up, like did my slow throttle on the first acceleration, and I got to three quarter throttle, and you'll see this in the video, it started pushing me across the floor. <laughs> so I throttled down, I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I actually ended up push, putting the, the nose, like, cause there's a, there's a pitot tube mount. Put, I'm, I'm glad I have my leather apron, cause I had it mounted right here in my stomach. And three quarter throttle, I was still getting pushed back, but at least then I could like restrain it a little bit. Um, I, I only ever got to full throttle for a, like two seconds. It was hardly anything at all. Basically blipped at full throttle and then back down. It is crazy how much power this aircraft has. Beware Coco. Oh, Coco's gonna love this thing. It's gonna be so much fun. So yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the gist of things. I'm just gonna try and fix the TV here. Yeah, Any yeah. comments or questions, make sure you uh, comment away. We got Ward behind the camera right now. Uh, Katie may pop in. Oh my gosh, why is this so difficult? I don't know. Usually it just like starts. I thought it would do it. I thought it would just start running away. Maybe we need to like exit out and go oh, back yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, all these That's systems, the secret. You know. Oh, hello and from Kuwait. What's up? Kuwait's in. Kuwait, dang, Kuwait, that's yeah. cool, there we go. And connecting to live chat. So we can't log on until we're actually started. That's the key. Uh, so Try and remember that for next time. We logged on before. Yeah. So that's why. Look at that, eh? Looking pretty stellar. <laughs> Ward, stop shaking the camera. Well, I'm trying to get <laughs> straight. Got your head cut off. Nice finger. I didn't do that. <laughs> it's <laughs> not me. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you do that? Oh, oh my that. gosh. Okay, so we're good here. Yes, Joe, we gave Katie your surprise. That was totally awesome. I got to show you guys too. Super windy Denver. That sounds lame. All right. So when Joe came and picked up the Bronco the other day, this is totally cool. He, uh, oh, I saw that. he brought this. In case of emergency. That is so cool. And we all know what fits inside that thing. It's perfect. So thanks, Joe. That's super cool. I think this is probably going to go up in my trailer, but uh, we'll see. It's as easy with the pipes. Flight RC's on, says, is all that snow out of there? We have had some ridiculous weather. When I got back from Tucson, it was pretty much all Gone. melted, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got a snowstorm, it melted again, and then we got another snowstorm. So it's been snowing for a few days, and then now it's been warm yesterday and today, so it's pretty much... It, uh, it's starting it, to melt away? Yeah, it, like by Tuesday, it should be all melted, so... Dave's on, so hi Dave. Howdy. And Stacy says, get your finger off of the camera. <laughs> yeah. Stop uh, shaking it. Get your thumb out of the okay, camera. He, the... he says. Okay, now set up for the camera. Easy there, pipe, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm holding the camera here, so I'll take you guys around. <clears throat> what we did today on the SU was, um, we got the engines installed. There's, there's still lots to do, actually. Did a bit of an inventory. David says hi, Russell. Hey, Dave, how you doing, man? Um, we're doing a bit of an inventory on stuff that we need to do. So engines was the big first thing yeah. to get done. So there was a lot of work still left in the engine. Still, we ran like about 80 feet of wire back and forth. Um, so that's done. Turbine telemetry units, those are installed. That's finished. So kind of the last thing to do in the center section is putting our plate that fits in here that covers all this stuff. So it's like the scale plate. Uh, so all that disappears basically. And um, then we have to get our air brake, uh, purple shiny things, yes. We have to get our air brake uh, solenoid valve hooked up to our actual air brake. That's got to get done. When we were powering this up earlier, the nose servo was doing something weird. It was like, eh, like power on, power off, power on, power off. So I just unplugged the servo. I don't know what the servo is doing. And then the last thing we have to do, kind of the major thing is we're switching the central box 210 out for a central box 400. Now the reason for that, I'll share the reason with you guys. 
So the way we set this up originally was we had a central box 210, or we have right now, a central box 210 in the front of the aircraft, a central box 210 in the back of the aircraft. Downside with that is our, our main power batteries are two cell LiPos. So when you run the power to here and back here, you know, a freshly charged batteries, 8.5, 8.4 volts. Um, and the flight number two, you're gonna be whatever, eight volts. So you're losing power, right? The central box 400 and the 300 series, you can use a three cell LiPo, the 400 here, you can use a four cell LiPo and you can regulate the outputs. So that's why we're changing this is we're putting three cell LiPo batteries in here and then our back central box, which is still gonna be the 210, that's gonna be fed from the BEC outputs. So we're gonna have a constant 8.4 volts. Um, that's really one of the only benefits to having the 400 uh, is the BEC outputs. The 300 series is awesome. And the 300 series is basically exactly what we're using in the F-16, right? So same thing here, we've got two three cell LiPos going in here and we've got a regulated 8.4 voltage all the time. So, so yeah, so that's it. So that's uh, what we have left to do on the SU. There's a bunch of scale bits and bytes to add. We're, uh, yeah, but it should be done by tomorrow, I think. Um, the F-16, we have uh, a lot of work left to do on the weathering. So the F-16 started weathering it yesterday. That's gonna be a fun video because it's more of a how-to video. Hi, Luna. And uh, so on the fuselage here, we got the stabs weathered. You can see there. And there, and then we got the rudder done as well too. Sorry, vertical stab, let's use proper terminology before the terminology police put me in jail. Yeah, exactly. Don't call it a rudder. So it's, uh, I don't think the camera's showing it very well, but it's, um, it's definitely dirty. So it's kind of a dirty look, but it's, it's really light. And, uh, oh, Joe, there's a ladder on the 16. We just don't have it on the table, but yeah. We, <laughs> The, the ladder's been living on the 16 for quite a while, so that'll be, that'll be in the video. Oh, there you go. Ward's got the ladder. Let's put the ladder on, make Joe happy. Stop whining, Joe. There we go. So we got a ladder for the F-16. Thank you, Joe. Um, rudder and vertical stab, yeah. <laughs> Wing, yeah. yeah, and here's the wing. This is actually probably a really good comparison. Before, so yeah, so that is obviously before on the left, uh, looks like a toy. And uh, on the right, we've got the weathered wing. So um, yeah, it looks really good. It's, it's a, if you watch the weathering video, it's definitely a, an interesting process. Sheldon says, let the dog in. <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks good though. I'm, I'm happy with it. I think the results are nice uh, and I'm, I won't explain it, but you guys will, uh, you guys will see it. So it's pretty cool. And then the underside here, I'll show you that. So both undersides have been completed. So I won't bother flipping that one over because it's already done. So just, okay. let, yeah, don't worry about that one. Um, so there's the underside there. So that looks realistic. I mean, thank you. That's that the intent like something coming in and you're like, oh, okay, I gotta go wash it. So there's a, yeah, there'll be some, uh, some cool techniques in the video for you if you watch them and um, I share my knowledge on how to do it, so. Very scale, Dave's gonna like that. Thanks, like, Joe. Joe says not overdone, yeah. No, it's, it's very Top Gun-ish. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it totally transforms the aircraft yeah, though, like does. this, that's like toy, yes. right? And then this is, uh, this is realistic. So, I'll, and I, I'm gonna talk about this in the video, in the weathering video, but here's the difference. So when you do a proper weathering on a wing or a, an airplane, um, it looks like the wind has flown and you've got you know crap leaking out of different areas like the, the flap here and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the manufacturer's weathering and here's the difference. So when you look at SkyMaster as an example, they fill in all of the uh, rivets and panel lines, clean everything off, then they go in with an airbrush and they basically are weathering both sides of the panel lines, which really, it looks good. I'm not knocking it, but realistically, if I was to do this with an airbrush, exactly the same technique they have, I'd put a piece of cardboard up here on the leading edge side and I'd be airbrushing just the back side. 
So yeah, that's that's the, the difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So looks good though from a, from afar, but it's it definitely is a totally different look when you compare this Realism. to something that's been weathered um, on its own. So, anyways, that's uh, my little my little overview of weathering. Oh, I know what uh, I know what I can talk about. Kinetics is gone. <gasps> Forgot about that. So, Say no. yeah. Yeah. And the lucky winner is? Uh, the lucky winner is George yes. from Mexico. Yes. Um, he flies IMAC. I know the guy. So yeah, he's, uh, he's, the Kinetics is on route right now to him. And uh, also my Super LAN is still for sale. So, and, uh, oh yeah, we've got an F-18 right there. Skymaster F-18 for sale. And, uh, just like going to be in the hold for a while. <laughs> All right, so there's Luna. Hi, Luna. Um, yeah, so I think it's time to uh, to make some noise. Okay. I think we should do that. I'm kind of shaking the camera all over the place. So uh, we haven't videoed any of this. So Got to fill up those top shelves. Hey, we still have planes in the uh, in the trailer to fill those top shelves. <laughs> <clears throat> they just haven't been brought in yet. So um, so we have to video this as well for the video videos. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing as well while we do the live. So um, I'll probably have, oh, nice. Good timing on the weathering. Hornet Flyer says my new Skymaster A10 arrives next week. Nice. Yeah, the weathering video should be out sometime possibly next week or the week after. So um, you all right there? Okay, so what do we have to do to run this thing? Everything's good, we've already powered it up, we've got batteries that are good. Um, we just need to get our safety equipment, our uh, earmuffs. You got any earmuffs for the old man? Yeah. Who's that, Ward? No, me, I'm older than him. <laughs> yeah, I can give you these ones here. I got my... Uh, Did you my, bring a pair? Yeah, I got my ear, I got my ear buds. Well, if, if no, they're the they're truck, hunting. They're hunting would have buds. Had my truck, I would have had some. No, they're hunting buds. They work really good. David said one at a time and then both. Um, yeah, we can do that I'm for sure. Up. I'd actually, what I'll do is the one that we've already run. Um, I'm not going to do that one. The one that we've done on the stand, which is the 200 number. So this one here, we're not going to run it separate but we are gonna run that one by itself. Um, and then we'll run both of them together. That's actually a good idea, David, thank you. So there's lots of fuel in here. Oh, this thing holds 11 liters of fuel. Yeah, <laughs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. Thanks to Joe for that awesome fuel pump. Um, Bill says, welcome back, Ward. You he's, look tanned. Somebody appreciates me. No, he doesn't. Welcome back. <laughs> he doesn't look tanned. He looks actually, you did, you, when he came back, I said, you do look really tanned. So. They, they wouldn't let me out, out in this heat too much. <laughs> they kept on throwing me inside houses with the air conditioning. <laughs> um, all right, so we need. <laughs> I'll be trying to visit and say, no, you come in, come in, come in. <laughs> Put me inside the house with the air conditioning. You don't have a start to skin. Well, I see. It. It's averaging about 35. Now it's a cool day. 35. All right now. And 100% humidity. All right now, yeah, where I don't know. right now where my friend was is right now it's 45. All right, guys. So. Open the garage. Not yet. We need to get the other camera set up. Oh yeah, yeah. And do our little intro here. <clears throat> okay. All right, and it is test run time. So we're all ready to go with this aircraft. What we're gonna do is because we tested the left engine for our test run of this, um, the, the Zykoi 240 engines, we're just gonna run the right engine by itself first, and then after that engine, we'll run both of them together. So all we're gonna do is unplug the battery for the left engine, just run the right one, and then we'll run both together. 
As per normal, I will put up on the screen exactly what we're doing throughout the test run. So like a restart test, et cetera, et cetera. And that'll give you guys some idea of what's going on in my head and what we're actually doing with the plane. Um, I suspect with two 240 engines, this thing's gonna have a lot of push. So it's gonna be, uh, gonna be entertaining to watch these two monkeys behind the screen Thanks, try and man. hold this thing back. <laughs> well, I was here for some dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hopefully there's no cars parked right there because they're gonna get some melted bumpers. I don't know. Yeah, over there. Oh, it's only grandma's car. No problem. Yeah. That's a door. It's bulletproof. <laughs> okay, so live view, I think you guys are good there. That'll Guess be a good view. Point in between or that? Oh, don't worry. Yeah, we'll just go kind of that way. Yeah, shoot the gap. Mind the gap, children, mind the gap. All right. Okay, so we're good there. Kind of want to get you guys holding this thing back in the view. It's a good spot there. Except the, the 14's in the way. There we go. So when you guys hold it, I'm gonna be on, if you guys are kind of holding the front of the aircraft, I'm gonna be on that side instead. Normally I'd be on the right side. Well, this side yeah, of the I aircraft, know. you know what I mean? It's a camera thing. Yeah, so, but we wanna keep that view wide open. So I'll put this stuff on the other side. You're gonna have to crouch down nice and Yeah. Let's pull this off. All right, so Assume live is position. on, this is on, we'll start this. Okay, so we'll grab our radio, grab ear protection. Radio. Assume the positions. Okay, so everything's forward, power on. Just get, it's gonna push me across, across the floor. Don't worry, I'll step in if you get moving. Yeah, it'll push me across the floor. It like will. That one drone we did. Well, this, this is gonna be like a, a 480. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we need to unplug one of the batteries. Uh, so we're gonna unplug the left turbine battery. They're marked. You okay, just gotta open this up. No, no. The plug-in's right underneath. Just, oh, okay. The one with the compressor, right? I'm not sure what everyone's marked left. Yeah, I think that's left. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah. so turbine number one. Actually, this would be turbine number two, technically. Yeah, right outside.
we'll do a restart check. Now we kick in two. Yeah, when there's two, it's going to be nuts. Because uh, this pushed me back already. Yeah. That's ridiculous how fast that yeah. speeds up. It's just cooling now, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the smell of warm metal. Oh. I just had an orgasm. <laughs> It's like buying a new car and smelling the engine. When oh, it's yeah, it's just mm. <laughs> <laughs> Only gearheads go this shit. Shut up, Ford. John, please look. Keep it G rated, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I love the smell of nice hot metal. That is. Re is that just the normal. Regular setup for uh, acceleration. I'm not sure. All right, guys. So that is one engine. Tons of power on this thing. Uh, it's going to be nuts with two. So we're waiting for this thing to cool down. We'll do a power cycle on it, and then we'll run two engines. All right. Well, that was one engine. And uh, it was definitely a lot of power. Did you see the, the line here squat down? Hey, Wait. Phil, how are you? Yeah, as soon as one, it just went whoop. I know. So like, she was trying to, she yeah. was trying to pull that way. Right? Victor, look at that white stuff. It's actually really nice outside right now. It's probably, uh, it's probably about 35 degrees, I think, outside. Something like that. Yeah, about five Celsius. Okay, so that is one. So David said, yes, Russell, at normal for now, at lower sea level, can adjust it faster for hovering. Oh, man, that's ridiculously fast. So, so the Hornet Flyer said, speaking of twins, single throttle channel or dual channel? Just one channel. Um, there's no reason to use two channels on a turbine because you're not, you're not uh, trimming anything, right? So it's, it's not like a gas engine where you are... Uh, having to have separate trims for each engine. With a turbine, you can have one throttle channel and uh, just output it to two different channels, or you can use a Y as well too if you really want to. So anyways, we will flip this around. So we'll power it off and then we will uh, plug in the second battery and then we'll run both of the, uh, of the engines. No, it was pushing the water behind your truck down there. Yeah. Got it or you want me to plug it in? No, I just got to get myself in position. Don't want to wreck it. You don't like me when I'm underneath the vehicle changing oil. I'm just like... <clears throat> Set. So is my age. That is ridiculous. Okay. Fast, how fast that thing goes up fast. So I'm just going to cool this one down a bit more so that we're even on the turbines. <laughs> So that's all ready. <laughs> Power's going on. Okay, we got both mics on. Good there. Turn this guy on. Yeah, I need that yellow orange rag. Put it here. On that boot, sir? I got it. 
Well, I'll help you. Yeah. No, I just want to give myself a little more cushion. Oh, my what do quarter you million dollar yeah, shoulder. Yeah, the work too. I just want to put something on my shoulder here because like I say, she's just pushing hard. Oh, with, with two, one. you'll be fine with two of you. <laughs> I don't want. Not like it's a car. He doesn't want to have a bruise. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are running two engines now. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's do two engines. Okay, oh, trim up. Mission on both. Not hold this by no, myself. You can't hold There's it. no way I could hold this. Like even the whole No, you need two people to hold it for oh. sure. Yeah, because they'll be right up against the wing. Yeah. I can see you guys as soon as, as, soon as well, I throttle like up, it's like in, oh, I'm, I'm leaning in, I'm pushing back. I'm like, it's <laughs> pushing good on my shoulder. Oh. That actually felt good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> that is, that's off the chain. <laughs> that's off the chain and how fast it, it spins up. Jasper's got something going on. That's all I can say. <laughs> if it well, guys, there, there it is. Wait, Twin 240s. No way. I'll be back there at that point. David said he'll need your help all the time, Russell. I'm no kidding. I'm coming. I'll be there. <laughs> Give it to him <laughs> with no brakes. I'll, I'll be the, like the dead weight. <laughs> yeah. Pass for this thing. You can sit on it and drive around. <laughs> oh, that'll clean off the runway. Between that and that. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. So that's, uh, 
That's crazy. That's uh, that's the SU. I'm amazed at how right now and how nicely those engines are in startup. Who's going to be flying this plane? So I think um, Coco first, then Dave. We. Uh, that is a nice. So Sheldon, one of the questions here from Sheldon. <laughs> Paul said he's in New Zealand and he heard them from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so Sheldon said, uh, is it like a 480 then or are there any losses with the twins? No, there won't be any losses with the twins. And that's the benefit of using, um, I mean, this aircraft's a little bit different, but if you have an aircraft like an F-15 where you can put uh, a single in the center with a bi pipe, or you can put two single engines, you're going to get uh, losses with the uh, the split pipe, right? So um, in this case, I mean, we're, we're getting, uh, when I did the test run yesterday of the one engine, the, the review and test run, um, with the Zykoi uh, data relay modules, you can see, because it knows your elevation, it knows the ambient temperature and stuff, you can see and it'll actually tell you the reduction in, in thrust that you're gonna get. So yesterday when I did the test run, uh, we were getting a 15% reduction in our thrust, which is probably very similar conditions today. So they were operating at, uh, I think we got 40, 44 pounds or something maybe, I can't remember, but um, yeah. So it basically had 90 pounds of push. Um, that's how I felt when I was running the F-16. Like it was scary, scary, yeah. scary. That's 39 Fahrenheit at four degrees Celsius right now. I'm not thinking. Yeah. That's got. It's got gobs of power for sure. Yeah, Dave, even in the hottest LA day. This yeah. Is gonna... So yeah, it's uh, impressive. Very impressive. So we still have lots of work to do, but uh, stinking cool. Stand it up on end and launch. And here's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with. Takeoff flaps. There's a little bit of thrust vectoring in the thrust tubes. We can add a little bit more, but this basically helps to take off. It's not much, but uh, it's helpful. So, anyways, there she is, man. That's uh, that's cool. What a cool airplane. Yeah, so we've used like two liters, but I, I sucked a whole bunch out, right? Right. Before we was, started, yeah, so. There was a bunch out already. Crazy. Man, I'm impressed by that engine. Yeah, they're nice. They're nice, for sure. We, um, just before we started the live, uh, just before we started the live, I figured out the fuel consumption. So when I did the test run on these engines yesterday, one minute at full throttle uses 680 milliliters per minute. So with this plane, 11 liters of fuel, you could run both engines at full throttle for eight minutes before you ran out of fuel. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun one. Coco was watching, you just laid down the gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'll be interested to see what the airspeed will be. Call it the SU Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I think my cat wants outside. Uh, so we're good there. I can close the door. Yep. Oh man, that's. She probably is at the garage door. Yeah. I thought I heard her meow. No one has. No. Don't call her. <laughs> Don't call her. All right, so power this girl down. There we go. That, that was, was wicked. That was absolutely wonderful. Like fun experience. Wow. Fun experience. <laughs> we have so many fun planes to maiden in Montana. If you guys can make it to Montana Jets, I uh, I highly suggest it because uh, when you think about what we're maidening down there, I don't even know if I'll be able to get it all done. But we've got the SU thirty the F-14 XL, the F-16, we've got the F-16 Venom, we've got a Elite Aerosports Razor, uh, my Elite Aerosports BDX, we've got the Super Bandit version two, which you guys haven't seen yet. We got the Ultra Bandit version two, which you guys haven't seen yet. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun event. It's gonna be a lot of maidens, 
I, I didn't count, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight, eight maiden meetings. flights. That's a lot of rounds of tequila. That's all <laughs> I know. Every successful flight. Tequila! Oh, crazy. That yeah. After that, you won't have any more. <laughs> well, that's the live, guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> If you, uh, if you guys have any questions, this is the time to ask. So um, let's see, what do we got up here? Tricky Ricky, uh, in the F-14, you all to put two of them 400s? No, we're putting the exact same engines, so twin Swiwin uh, or Zykoi 240s. Uh, Carlos said, hey, hey, Carlos. Ooh. Kelly, Klaus is working on the webpage for Jets Over Montana. Perfect, when you have that, please send it to me, Kelly and Klaus, if you're watching. Uh, what's on the billboard? Oh my gosh. The billboard. That's a good question, Sheldon. Good, good question. Good. When will the Montana Jets be? That is uh, the weekend after Father's Day weekend. Yeah. 17th. So, build board. Skymaster F-16. That's the one that's here right now. We've got our XL F-14. That actually should say X XL. There we go. Thanks, Stacy. June 17th. Uh, SU-30, that's almost, man, the board's going to be empty. We've got two of those being erased. So yeah, the F-4 is showing up, the large F-4. Uh, should be here next week, I think. So that'll be starting up. My T-33 is on the back burner right now, who knows. Uh, Ultra Bandit, that's the one that uh, you guys haven't seen yet. Corsair from Hangar 9, that one has the radio going in it. Super Bandit, that's the one you guys haven't seen yet. BDX for Kyle, that's starting soon. Razor for David is starting soon. Carlos, I am coming to the best in the West in, Cal in California. I will be there. Uh, we've got a uh, project for Jurgen, which is the, um, the pattern plane. Uh, Stacy's A10, Stacy's on here now. We're, we're doing some maintenance on it and repainting it in the black snake scheme. We've got a Rebel Pro to rebuild. We've got the Rebel Hot to finish. And that one may come off the board, I think. I think we can erase that now, actually. There we go. So that's the build board right now. We have quite a bit of work left to do. Oh yeah, and the OV-10 from Kyle. That's whenever that comes back from Joe, so. So that is, whoa, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Carlos said you should come to Best in the West Jets in California. I will be there May 1st or whatever the date is. Um, yeah, I'm planning on coming to that, so I will be there. Isn't that in the fall? Mm -mm. California Jets is May, May 1st. I'm thinking that. Oh, best in the West? Best in the West. Oh, yeah, best, best in the West. September, October. Yeah, that's later. No, I'm not going to best in the West. I'm going to Jets over California. That's what I'll be at. Where's that out of? California. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just fly into LA. We'll go from there. Exactly. I don't have to think. I just go. I just show up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Dave said, you are all having too much fun. Yes, we are. Yeah. John, you ever mess with the Elite brand switches? Yes. Um, we've got, uh, I use some of their stuff. I haven't used a lot of it, but like in the F-16, we're using the GPS. Uh, we use their expanders. All of their stuff is really nice. Um, it's all good quality stuff, so... Oh yeah, the event is in October, so that's best in the West. Yeah. So, yeah, so I haven't, um, I haven't used anything beyond uh, the GPS unit and the two expander modules, the SC4s and SC6s. I think that's everything that I've used from them. But yeah, all their stuff's nice, so no, uh, no issues with any of their stuff, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't... Either we chat or we tear out the... Uh... The asphalt. What? I think we start on that, putting that 400 in. Oh, the central box in, yeah. yeah. Ugh. That doesn't yeah, sound very I don't know fun. if you want to do that on the live or not. Not really. I don't really want to do that on the live. Well, we, yeah, <laughs> How about, uh, of, where's this go, where's that go? There we go, we can show you some weathering. Uh, I don't know if I want to do weathering either. I don't know, you guys want to see weathering live? If you want to see weathering live, let me know. It's going to be a short live. <laughs> We can do the top of the wing. We got cut back in budgets. On the live stream, we can all have a good night, get a little bit high on lacquer thinner. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I was floating last night, I'll tell you that much. 
Maybe seen, I spent the entire day in here. He was seeing oh, yes. rainbows and butterflies and yes, and unicorns. Hearing, hearing that twangy music yeah. that you get when you get high. But nobody's answering. They don't want to see weathering. Jason, thanks for making it to the live. Is this your first time? That's super cool. Okay, Hornet Flyer says works for him. All right, we'll do some live weathering. It's actually kind of boring and lame, but I'll show you guys the process. <laughs> you should have seen some YouTube stuff. Well, the, the, way I've been, the way I've been putting the video together is I've been videoing the entire wing, so like 30 minutes of video or whatever it is, but then I'm going to condense it and do a voiceover, so it'll actually be... Uh, I think, well, I hope sort of interesting. So Jason we'll likes the content. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll show you guys weathering on the wing live. So we've got the, the one wing. Now, the probably the biggest challenge I have is matching the two. Not that they need to match perfectly, but make um, it yeah, make it look similar is the, is the challenge. But if you're using the same technique generally get kind of the same result. So anyways, I use, um, and I talk about all this in the video coming up, but I use lacquer thinner uh, for the weathering. Um, I don't use paint thinner because the paint thinner, um, what it does is it doesn't dry very quick and that doesn't work well with um, when you're doing the weathering. So you need, you kind of need everything to dry and kick off fairly quick so you can control the streakage if that makes sense. So if you use paint thinner, what happens is you get too many streakies. It's different than what? Acetone. Yes, don't use acetone. So then we're using oil paint here. So I don't know if you want to get closer or, or whatnot. I don't want to get I don't know if it works if you put it, the camera there. Yeah, here, I'll put it here. I gotta adjust it down. Sorry if it's shaky, guys. Just spread the legs out a little bit. There we go. Let's get a better base. And all right, what a fun live. We're doing weathering live and to engine runs live. So these are the two colors that I use. I use lamp black and raw umber. There you go. Yep. Perfect. So those are the two colors that I use. Turpentine, I don't like using turpentine. Who said that? Kelly? Kelly. Yeah. No, I don't like using turpentine. I find it uh, same kind of thing. It takes too long. It does smell nice though. I don't think you can get turpentine anymore. Yeah, yeah. you can. I, uh, one of the F-18s that I did, I used turpentine on it and it was nice, but smells a heck of a lot better than this stuff. They, use it a, they used to use it a lot in furniture manufacturing, turpentine. Yeah. Yeah, plus for cleaning up car parts. So we've got yes. our, uh, Diesel. we've got our two paints in there. So what I do is I mix this up until it's like a, um, I don't know. Almost like gel, like hair gel maybe is the best way to explain it. That's the kind of Jonathan has no gray hairs. <laughs> I don't, did you hear something, Russell? I didn't, I think I heard somebody say something. He even said there's another different type of Zykoi coming. Chikoi. Chikoi. I tell you, as Gasper's got something going on, the way that thing restarted up, it started so fast. Yeah. I don't know what he's done. So this is kind of what we're looking for. So it doesn't really matter though, because you have to, you have to let it dry anyway. So basically what we're doing at this point, the first step is to go over all of the panel lines and everything on the wing. So it's kind of a boring thing, but if you guys have any questions, we can talk while I do this, because this is basically it. What did you put in your email? Just like... Arts and crafts. Yeah, in my <laughs> Facebook post. Yeah, Facebook. Arts and crafts time. This is arts and crafts tonight. Do this in school. You get marks. And then I get it um, like the wing joint here as an example. I'll put it on the wing joint even if there's no rivets or anything because you'll get some buildup in those areas, which helps yeah. with having it look realistic. We got a nez hair there. Those are okay. They help with the natural effect. And then we just go crazy and get it all over the pylon. Echo Smoke says you're weathering and he's printing, priming. Nice. And then we just make sure we get all of the rivets. 
then I get our. Them. As soon as you touch the yeah. paint on them, like you can hardly see them under the flat colors. Well, yeah, it's but such as soon a. As you touch them, they just pop right up. Let's see, let's see, you put it on thicker than I thought you were going to. Well, there's, there's, it does, okay. it does, the thing is, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Because you're just pulling it off, anyways. Yeah. So yeah. the point is just to get it in all the crevices. Like, this is way too much. If I had a. Probably if it mattered, I could put it on thinner, but it doesn't matter. So. Probably 30% would come off. 30. I mean, leave 30% behind. Yeah. Because you're like dipping and wiping, dipping and wiping. It's just natural. Thing. So the thing about the weathering is if you don't like what you did, you just clean it all off. Like you can use lacquer thinner and it just, you just clean it all off. It comes off completely. So, um, don't worry about it if you're if you're thinking about weathering a plane and you're kind of scared to do it. Uh, it's really not that scary. How long does it take to dry after your? So this step, I kind of wait about uh, five minutes. It doesn't need need very long. And that's why I use lacquer thinner. If you use paint thinner, uh, it's going to take a lot longer. I would say probably an hour before you could start wiping it off realistically. Yeah, so um, the volatilities are much more slower with that. Yeah, I mean this stuff's more nasty, right? So yeah. yeah. So anyways, yeah, I just, uh, and then when I do the flap here, I like to have the flap on and uh, basically get it right in the joint there. And then what I'll do is I will drop this flap down and make sure we get it all the way in the, in the joint. No, we can't have that on TV. Big Mom wanted us to have some jello shots. <laughs> oh, that does smell good though. Oh yeah. She is stinky. And we don't need to do anything here because as soon as we wipe, you'll see, as soon as we start the wiping process, this just, the whole wing gets really dirty. It takes me back to the days of when painting the plastic models. Yeah. That's what it really does. Sometimes my mom watches my live, so I'll tell this story because maybe she's here to hear it. Remember I used to build models in my, in my room my basement, my room was downstairs in the yeah. basement. And I built like, you know, cars and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I remember coming in my room one time and uh, I'm building this model. I can't remember what I was doing on the model, but I remember walking in and she just yells at me, are you sniffing glue? <laughs> I looked at her, I'm like, I'm building a model. <laughs> so mom, if you're watching, it'd be really hilarious if you, uh, <laughs> if you remember that story. Cause it made me laugh still today. <laughs> Are you sniffing glue? Yeah. Yes, Mom. I'm sitting in my room yeah, sniffing glue. Sniffing glue. The kids nowadays, you can never trust them. <laughs> well, that was a thing back then. Now it's seemingly gone. So same thing with the leading edge. Basically, um, drop the leading edge, get it in there, and you can wipe it off, of course, right? But you want to, if you leave that and the leading edge drops down when you go to full flaps, you're going to have this clean area, which looks goofy. That's not going to look right. So when you do this, you just got to think about what's happening on the aircraft. The crap is coming out of the joints, excuse me, out of the rivets, and it's moving with the airflow. that these things you know when they're taking off they're sitting beside the other one so they're getting a lot of the turbine fuel yeah right so that's a lot of the weathering is from their own planes blasting or just getting the residual oil dirt from the dirt. runways and, and from the runway attaching to the the fuselage from that yeah and that's it's actually we, kind that's of what does it hard yeah. sometimes to actually see the rivet lines on these planes yeah and and also when they land, right, and if it's wet, the water yep. spits up the oils and then drags all the stuff. The all rubber the from the tires and it screeches right. in place. That's right. And you see, the, you see the big jets and see how dirty the bellies get, <laughs> right? And that's just basically from that nose rail. Okay. It really pulls up those rails. Oh, you wait till we do the first swipe. 
That is insane. It looks like you're destroying the wings. <laughs> Who's <laughs> saying that? Demon. Yeah. <laughs> it does, man. That's yeah. why I posted a picture on Facebook of the vertical stab um, with just all these lines on it because it's pretty funny. Most people look at it and they have no idea what the heck is going on. So. And the other guy, Keith, says... Is anybody, just what, anybody just stepped in right next to me. What? What, what are, are you, you doing? doing? Yeah. <laughs> and Keith says that's why body shop people are always a little... <laughs> Bit off. Oh, yeah, because the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. I think this wing is going to be a little bit better looking. Well, actually, I think the rivets are a little more pronounced overall on this wing, but like around this area, the swing's kind of, the rivets have disappeared a little bit. So this wing should look actually look really good. I think it'll look better than the other wing. Okay, so that is everything yeah, right there. Nick's just arrived. He's got his daylight saving time for him. Howdy, his. Nick. Yeah, good old daylight savings time. Where's Nick from, anyways? He's Walter Mitty he said, we always do a burnt umber wash first. We always do a burnt umber wash first? Yeah, you'll see this. Whatever uh, that is. <laughs> well, that's this. Let's raw, umber, oh, okay. burnt umber, same thing. And so yeah. says you're making a mess, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now what we do is we just leave it. Um, it doesn't really need to go that long, but uh, we just want it to kind of firm up in the little uh, rivets and panel lines and everything. But uh, yeah, we start to get ready with the the shop wiper, the lacquer thinner. So. In shop towels, or do you? Use Summer's not here yet. Just blue towels. It looks like there's summer there. Nope, not yet. Not no. yet. No yeah. summer. We've been fighting the snow. Use this. So when I do this, I like to have a container. And uh, what I do with the container is put our lacquer thinner in there. Uh, because it evaporates so quickly, I'm just dumping this all out because it's empty. Uh, because it evaporates so quickly, you want to cover it, <laughs> that helps. Otherwise, in a few minutes, that'll be disappeared. Oh, I have a funny story for you about uh, containers and father-in-law burning garbage. I had fun. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah that's... I could imagine. So we... Uh, Do you stuff you have? Uh, we'll tell, it's story time. It's so story we, time. We, uh, we live on an acreage and uh, there's no garbage pickup, so we burn our garbage. Oh no, if you're... We, we help to contribute to the CO2 <laughs> losses in the environment <laughs> uh, because there's not enough. Anyways, um, so we burn our garbage. So anyways, we usually pile up our garbage for the week. And then uh, Grandpa, who lives with us, Katie's dad, uh, he burns all the garbage. And me and Ward were in the shop here today. And I, I can't remember if I heard it go off or not or whatever. We, anyways, we went inside for a little bit. And I heard a boom. And I think I had three empty spray cans from oh. spray painting. And I put them in my garbage bag and I brought the garbage bag out there and I totally forgot about it. I think they were paint cans. Yeah. And then I'm standing inside like, oh my gosh, you just had a paint can blow up. And then Ward comes in and boom, <laughs> <laughs> and goes off. It went 30 and then feet a, here and Yeah, it shot away. completely backwards <laughs> by in the house. And then another one went off. It was so funny. <laughs> I actually definitely did that when I was younger. <laughs> Hello from Plainsfield, Illinois. Nice. Could you please show some time how to use the plastic spire wrap? To... Yes, for sure. Absolutely. We can definitely do that. Coming up on our BDX build, we'll be using some spiral wrap. So I'll actually show you how to install that stuff. It's super easy. Take your glow pen and... Wipe the edge of the oil paint. Oh. Try taking your gloved hand on the edge of the oil paint and wipe it off with a glove. It will leave a great looking oil streak. Oh, nice. I can't change it up though, Kelly. Otherwise our wings are gonna look different. Yeah. <laughs> Ward, you look suitably tanned. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay, so what we do now is we take paper towels, shop Lots towels. And I like to have the garbage close by because you go through a lot of them. Just whole thing here. Word. You want to 
start at this side here first, which you, uh, it's got more time in on the cure. Yeah. It doesn't really matter because it all goes together, but. Okay. Where are you starting here? Which edge? Okay, so we'll leave that. We won't open this other one. Actually, I'll open it and see what it looks like. Perfect. <clears throat> no safety cap. That's weird. Oh, yeah. That reminds me of putting those plastic rubber models together. Hmm. So all I do, take my rag, get some on there. Doesn't have to be crazy. The first one, all we're doing basically is we're spreading it out and just getting a nice even finish, if that can be said that way. And then I just keep turning the rag, but it gets to the point where it doesn't really matter because yeah. I go over the entire thing. So basically the goal is to keep the material in the recesses and just go evenly all across the wing. And the, the key here is moving in the direction of the airflow. Um, we had a CARF <laughs> MIG we were just talking about 17 <laughs> in the shop a couple years ago, popular plane, uh, very expensive plane and CARF's weathering was terrible. I mean, it looked okay, but when you looked at like the front of the fuselage, it was weathered with the wind direction. And the the back, back was like up and down. Up and down, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it it's, look right. it's not stuff I usually judge in the videos. Guys, it's top uh, down, though. No, I know, but I'm, I'm not like yeah. vocal about it in no. my videos, so, but it does look kind of goofy. I think if that's one of the last things that those guys are actually thinking about when they're doing it. Right? Yeah. The weathering. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's one that rag. It looks really good already. It does. It looks like it's if you're looking the, for like a desert storm yeah. sand sorties and coming in. If you're looking for a really dirty plane, like I I did an F-18 one time and it wasn't much cleaner than that. It looked really cool. Really. Yeah, I, I think I still have pictures of it. it. Wasn't that Andrews or something? Like yeah. That? yeah. Well, that's this container's terrible. F one. Holy shit, that stuff is greasy. Just having a little spill action here. Oh yeah, you don't need any kind of, any kind of. Uh... I may put that in the other container actually. Where's the other container? Oh, it's okay, I'll do it after. Okay, I'll throw it in the garbage can. The garbage can. That is funny about the... So when you use, sorry, pencils. when you use paint thinner, this is what happens. You get those streaks and it's really difficult to get rid of the streaks because it takes so long for it to dry. So. But Man, look at those rivets just come out. Yeah. Wow. Nicely done. Again, this is something I would love to do, but it's never not, got the er nerve to it's do. It's not looking like a toy <laughs> anymore. No, it's this dirty. looks really neat. <laughs> so this is essentially step number one, is to go over it all, kind of even things out. And then what we're gonna do is continue wiping. The thing is it doesn't, like it's dry right now-ish, Right, you can see there with my hand, I can still rub it, but with enough lacquer thinner, it still comes back no problem, so. <clears throat> you got the front of the wing in the view here? Right there. So you just keep moving it off until you get the- Yeah, sort of. That you want? So what I do is, I'm gonna get this kind of wet, and then I'm gonna take this. And wipe.
Fender being wants to know why you haven't answered to his message, but you don't answer text messages. <laughs> Which message? <laughs> I don't know. I think you said something at the beginning of the show there, but that's a text message. Oh. And it's on your phone. <laughs> He's oh. using his phone. Yeah, we're using yes. the phone. I can't phone. answer text messages because you guys are on my text messenger. Yeah. So it's kind of a fine line here with um, the stage this gets at. So right now this rag is perfect. It's a little bit damp still, but not damp enough to leave streaks. So this is a great time to just do a quick back and forth and smooth out our streaks. See you later, Craig. Like that. I'm not worried about direction right now because we're just getting a nice even finish. David wants to know, does the finish get damaged by the paint thinner? No, not at all. So if we take clean um, lacquer thinner right now and wipe this wing down heavily, it com it's completely gone. So because this plane has clear coat on it, that's probably why. If it was just paint, uh, it would probably get removed with the lacquer thinner. Can I say walk by the shop and get a contact high? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm just kind of working to this midpoint on the wing. And then we're going to switch our rag out for a new one. He took a photo of us while we took that run up. <laughs> so you just, looks like you just take it off until you get what you want. Look. Yeah, sort of. So if you compare these two, this one's obviously a lot dirtier than this one. So on this next pass, we'll be pretty much caught up with, uh, with having them be similar. Yeah, you just let it, let it change as it dries? No. no. So what happens now is I'm taking a fresh, clean rag, and we're going to put just a little bit of paint thinner on there, not much. You don't want to take a lot or, Sorry, off. lacquer thinner. You don't want to take a lot off, yeah. And then I'm going to dry it out by splitting the, the rag a bunch of times, so now we've got it uh, spread out, I guess, is the best way to say it. And then we're kind of doing the exact same thing we just did, but with a clean rag. Keith says, don't, Kenneth says, don't forget the video. <laughs> I've already videoed a lot of this. Thank you though. <laughs> cool Cat says, hey, that's cool. He says, hey, Jonathan. Howdy. So you can see now in this area, we're starting to get a little bit cleaner and closer to that finish there. So now we just keep wiping and basically removing what we don't want on the plane. So you don't have to worry about doing it all at one shot, just no, because until you get like this was dry, right? And we put a little bit of lacquer thinner in yeah, the yeah. in the stuff, barely, and it just turns to liquid again. Stuff that was, yeah, but that is actually looking really good. So now we get an area wet like this, and we take a dry rag and smooth. And you can see, as soon as you do that, the rivets just go. That's and I key. want a little bit of streaking like this. I don't want it to be smooth. That looks really good. That's a good technique like you did that because, yeah, that looks really good. And part of it is just getting your rag yeah, to the point it's where it's hey, perfect. Right? And for everybody who knows, Katie's here. She's getting buzzed with us. How's the smell, honey? I can't smell anything. Oh, good. <laughs> She's she says she can't smell anything. Oh, it's, uh, I was floating last night. Oh, yeah. You kind of float more anyway. <laughs> War's not saying anything. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, I drive bus and pot's legal. 
words like, this feels like uh, when I was born in the 1920s. No, this uh, feels like normal, everyday driving. This feels like the first time I <laughs> smoked marijuana in high school. There we go. Echo smokes says, hi, Katie. There we go. So very similar to the other wing panel, not, not this area, right? Because we haven't done that area yet. But this area, I like it. I think it looks good. So I'm just going to clean up our flap, our root of our wing. And I'll show you guys, oh, we, we'll finish the rest of the wing and then I'll show you a bit of a trick that I do at the very end. Okay, so happy with that. Our rivets look awesome. We got some nice streaks in there. Um, I'm looking for like this here. I'm just gonna give that a bit of a, a wipe because it looks like it's like a fingerprint almost, right? Which doesn't look natural. Canada says it's like taking the chip and never leaving the farm. <laughs> and I love this, where you get those little bits of crap coming out of the rivets. Yeah. Looks so cool. And it's true because some rivets are a little bit more countersunk than yeah. others, especially in fighter jets. Nez is probably sleeping in the house somewhere. She is. I checked. She's curled up. Yeah. She's snoozing a little too. Well, cool cat's looking for her. Sorry. Cool cat. Cool cat's looking for Nezzy? Yeah, but Nez was out for a, outside for a while too. Oh, yeah. Take Nezzy was outside for a couple hours today. She came running across the door and I was like, oh. And I opened up the door and she bloop, came in. Davis, so hello, Katie. Davis, let's go see you there, David. Well, don't just stand there, come woman the camera. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Ward's doing a good job because he's not holding the thing. I need your arm, not. Okay, so we'll get the next area wet. Now take one of the circles, which you see, and the trick glove or the glove trick. So what I'll do with the circles afterwards is I'll go in with my airbrush and that's where I'll add the uh, the extra stuff. Oh, the brown? Well, I'll just add some more addition. Okay. Right? right. Some airflow. Yeah. Okay. Point well taken, Kelly. Just a tiny bit, he says. I could see Kelly making some really nice like that Corsair, it's going to be so well weathered. It's going to be so... Gerald says try using white, white mineral spirits instead of black or thinner. How come? You got to give me the so reason why. the same techniques on this plastic. Oh, or seeds. Without a buzz, it gets this low VOH. That's plastic oh. RC models without the buzz. But... You need the buzz. We need the volatile. Remember, it's, <laughs> it's killing brain cells. <laughs> we need the buzz. <laughs> okay, so we need a bit more of this stuff. Trying to pour it is the, always the challenge. Oh my gosh, what a terrible container. Yeah, those metal. This time, all of acid that comes in those size containers. More towels if you need. Not too much. Yeah, you can see it right away. Yeah. Gerald says he's been doing it for years. Nice. Cat says he wants to, if you load the load, leave an edge with paint and fly it. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Nick says, let's get weathered. <laughs> Let's get weathered and Russell and Ward had been weathered perfectly. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe 
Oh, that looks so good. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You just kind of compare from side to wing to wing. Now we'll come back and we will do our pylon. So all I do now is just go over everything, confirm we're happy with everything, everything's done properly. How long does it take to dry? Uh, you got to give it quite a while actually. With the oil paints, that's one of the downsides. Um, areas, areas like this is probably going to be a couple weeks because it's very thick. So we have to clear coat over this. So what I'll do is I'm going to get all of it done, set the plane aside, and then come back in a couple of weeks and clear coat it. Satin, I guess. Yeah, satin, satin 2K clear. Oh, okay. Kelly says you're doing a good job. That's awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Kenneth says it looks good, John. Thank you. Okay, so one last look over everything. We're good. So this is my final little trick here. This is one of the things I like to do. So I will take a dirty rag. We're gonna get just a little bit of thinner on there. Not much. And I just highlight the leading edge just a little bit. So I'm gonna clean it off because the leading edge is going to be clean, right? Sort of. So I take a little bit off, and then I'll go back and make it blend a little bit. It's uh, stuff underneath the table there, in those little uh, things. Tell Joe yes. He's awesome. Nick says, yeah, too, far too shiny for Israeli flying machine. There. So it's not a huge thing, but it's just a little bit lighter than the rest. Uh, no, that's the uh, yeah, that's, that's the paint. I'll uh, I'll grab a little bit of the clear in a little bit here once we're done this wing. Okay, so that top side is done. So what I'll do now, this is also a very important step, is I got to flip this wing over because the underside's already done, and we got to make sure we didn't screw up the underside because yeah. I was touching the underside of the flaps and and that. So flip it over. Now you can see a couple fingerprints there. Two spots. Okay. So I'm just going to clean those guys up. And this was done yesterday, so it's not really overly dry at all. You can just come in here and wipe it up. Basically blend it in. There we go. Yeah, the, actually, I like the underside of this wing too. Looks nice. So that is weathering wings live. And you'll see it on the video too. Arts and craft. Arts and crafts time. <laughs> Even though we all took art in junior high. Don't go back and touch it. You're going to wreck it. Yes. Just Don't clean. overwork it. That's clean like those areas up. Just once it's done, it's well to try. There we go. Tell Joe yes, I liked it. Joe, Katie said yes, she liked it. That's cool. 
Sweet. That looks so good. It looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, transforms Burnt the plane. It's also a great color for the bottom of the fuse, fuse especially aft area. Yes. Agreed. Who said that? Kelly. Um, I'll grab some clear that we're going to be using. Look at that. It looks exactly the same. And even. Very, very, very yeah. Well, it's not going to be exactly the same anyway. Not in real life anyways. So here is... Yeah, that's the stuff. The stuff that we use. So this is the satin finish. So this is the uh, finish that we used on the... Um, Black Snake A10 yeah. is the satin finish. That stuff's pretty good. Yeah. It doesn't give a gloss, right? No, no it's satin, so it's not, not it's not flat, but it's... Uh, you, can get, you can get a gloss or semi-gloss. Or satin, flat. Or flat, right? Yeah. But, but the realist, realistically, the... You don't want shiny anyways. No. The plane is, is designed flat, right? So Those cans are like... Or satin. <laughs> Kelly says the wings went from built by Mattel. Mattel's to now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and it takes, uh, you know, it's... Can you explain why you need to airbrush the stars separate? Stairs separate. Stars. Stars. Oh, my goodness. What? Stars, he, he's saying that's that's stars, not stairs. Okay. Where's the well, eye band? <laughs> well, I was looking at it oh, fast. It so the disappeared. commentary. The uh, the airbrush stuff basically it's going to add or it can add a little bit more depth. So like all of our circles here, is that showing up in the? Yeah, faintly. Let's see if I can bring it closer. So all of our circles here, all of our panels and stuff, I mean, it's good. Our panel lines are filled in, but you can take it one step further and you can do what Skymaster did here on, on their stuff, right? So you've got, that's not a great spot to show it, but like this. The only difference though is we would only do it on the trailing edge. So we would do it a little bit here in this area. We need Trusty's help. So we would hold up a piece of cardboard or paper and just airbrush this direction right here a little bit. Hold up a piece of cardboard or paper, airbrush this, right? In the direction of wind flow. Not doing any of this other stuff, just generally around it. You're just adding a little bit of depth and uh, it's just a cool effect. So I think the airbrush is a great way to do it. Um, I don't like going back and messing with this finish. Because if you're to try and add, in my, this, and, and weathering's all subjective, right? There's so many different ways. This is, this is art, is, is exactly what it is. Right. So if you come in here and you start messing with your oil paints, um, you run the risk of, of screwing everything up and having to start over. So that's my suggestion. And I think it's also your taste, too. Yeah. <laughs> Nick says go fast paint. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's exactly it. Awesome. Oh, that looks good. So yeah, we've up. got... Um, hmm? Got a thumbs up from Flight Systems. Arsenal. Thank you. That's Sal from Sky Candy. Oh, so the last thing we have to do for weathering on the 16 is the fuselage. We're not going to do that tonight because that's a tomorrow project. That's a, big super that's a big project. Starting at the front and you work your way backwards. And then you do the underside. So it's, uh, it's a lot. Yeah, you're going to remember you're going to have a little bit more smoke from where the cannon gets shot out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where... Uh, powder smoke. That's where the, the airbrushing... I, I, I feel yeah. like the airbrushing is better because I feel like I have more control. Yeah, because this is, I think, where their cannon is on this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is where they get all the... The crud? Oh, Katie's behind the camera. If you have any comments, Katie has to say them now. If you haven't tried the Spice Coke, I'm not sponsored by Coke, but these are really good. <laughs> I do enjoy them. So, if you have any other questions, ask away. We got, uh, whoa, we got 30 minutes left or less. Yeah. Would you
Hopefully the live still stays on. Did you hang up? Mm -mm. I, well, I flicked off. You the, flicked it off? Okay, yeah. good. Um, yeah. Here we go. Thanks for the Weathering 101 lesson. I got a place to start now. Yeah, don't be scared. Just do it. Hop into it because you can always undo what you did. Yeah, that's, that's the important thing. Yeah. Like when you saw me dip a fresh rag in there with the thinner and wipe it over, you could do that and you could take everything off. So, and you could also take off a lot more than I left on, right? You could just do clean wipes and it would pretty much leave the rivets filled, but I like the the um, sort of dirty look is my preference. Kind of so. You have a tall pack of Dr. Pepper for us. Nice. Uh, Diet Dr. Pepper. Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh, that's, that's for me, more, not for you. Yeah. I love that. I love that stuff. They have all the flavors down yeah. there. Yeah. They taste better. Yeah. I really like Dr. Pepper. I remember as a kid going into like and their, their pops were so much better. Dr. Pepper was so much better. So when you were inside and we were running the engines, were they loud? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you should have seen the tail that was of the exhaust coming the, out. The water behind my truck, the water puddle behind my truck was like... <laughs> it was taking the snow 15 feet back and picking it off and throwing it. And I'm like... <laughs> well, yesterday when we had a bunch of people over and... We opened the door and you were running that yeah, engine. I was just test running the 240 engine by itself. Everybody in there was like, <laughs> <laughs> what the H is going on? Yeah. yeah. What is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was pretty wild. It's the hush bed. For pretty us. wild. Yeah. All right. What do we got? What did Don say? Dr. Pepper Cherry is great. Yes, oh. I agree. I agree. And the cream soda <clears throat> one. Yeah, the cream soda is really good. Kenneth says, do you show paint chips along the leading edge? Mm. Hmm. Again, you can. Depends on how much you want to get into it. On something like the Corsair, I think it's kind of a cool look. Um, they from the propeller, yeah. Like the F-16 yeah. or, or like jets and stuff, I've never done it, but the Corsair that I weathered, a long time ago, four years ago uh, now, I did a bunch of silver marks on the leading edge and all, all over the can or the, the cowl and it looked awesome because it's very realistic on that one. So I don't know what color it would be underneath. Just gray? I don't know. I don't know. Nick says, Ward's gonna want combat pay after the exploding cans. <laughs> Oh, you didn't hear that story either? No. Nope. Yeah, your dad. <laughs> so your dad was burning the garbage out back. Oh, no. And I think I brought uh, one of the garbages from here, and I think there's three empty paint cans in there. <laughs> so me and Ward go inside, and I hear, boom! And I go to the back uh, window, and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And it was loud. And then another one exploded, and it shot away from the house oh, the other direction, goodness. about 40 feet. And your dad starts backing up, and then another one went off. It was awesome. I have my baking spray cans that I don't put in the garbage for that reason. That <laughs> yeah, was pretty funny. So, yeah, fighter jets don't normally get chips on the wings as they tend to keep the runway so clean. That's a great point. So, <clears throat> yeah, on something like the Corsair, I think it totally makes sense. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else to talk about. The guys aren't asking questions. No, nobody's asking questions, so. The weather is getting warmer. It is. It feels like summertime soon. All plotting out, getting ready for Montana. We did get some cool things in, though. I'll show you guys the cool stuff we got. Stuff. Yes. Show them the stuff, too. So, what kind of stuff do we got? Well, we got a... A wing. I'll put the wing there. We got some BDX bags for my BDX. Look at the tail on that thing. That's the tail? That's the tail for the BDX. That's like some people's... That's why you can yank on the darn thing. Yeah, that's like some people's jet. So that's cool. And here's Kyle's BDX, so same plane. We got the wing bags for the BDX. They're big. That's cool, big wings. 
And there's another set of BDX bags up there for this plane in orange. BDX bag wing number two. Nice. And the thing that I've loved lately, fuselage bag. Mm -hmm. Not a body bag. I call it a body bag. No, you can hold up that tail end ward. It's huge. Body bag sounds like death. It a big plane, right? It's a big plane, yeah. It's like a big whale with the, with, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. reminds me of a killer whale, right? You can get inside there. But yeah, that's, that's for this, right? Oh, so. look at that, that black mm -hmm. this time. Get inside, get inside. Yeah, when we were down in Tucson, having this bag for the Rebel was a game changer. It was so nice. Because at the end of the day, all we did was we put our planes in the, in the bags because Stacy had his plane there and we just tossed them in the bottom of the trailer and they can like touch each other and be on top of each other and it doesn't matter. It's so yeah. nice. Because the, those bags are so... Yeah, they're so thick, right? So, so thick and durable. And we got... Uh, I was just playing around with the BDX here and uh, playing around with putting the 240s in there. Oh, we also got a, we also got a, what kind of stand is that? Lukey stand. We also got a Lukey stand from, from David in Tucson Jets. Thank you, David. It came from Florida, didn't it? It did. So the Sweeben 240 fits in there really nicely. It really does. So you guys will see in the comparison video, but the Sweeben 240 is actually a smaller engine than the Zykoi 240. So that is very curious. But uh, it's a good pairing in there for sure. It's only one for this whole thing? For the plane? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a big, big engine though. It's a big tuna. It looks like a big... <laughs> yeah, Sorry. it'll be fun. Flies really well. 240 in this thing? Be... Mm-hmm. So for mine, well, and same as Kyle's here. So we ordered the upgraded pipe from JT Pipes, Joey Tamas. Um, so that's coming for mine. We got the metal tail cone coming as well too. Yeah, I'm just still undecided on what engine to put in, but it's probably going to be a, it's probably going to be a Swewin because they're available. It probably isn't going to be a Zykoi because getting one is the challenge. Somebody, yeah, you gotta cash in a favor to or have ordered it about uh, six months ago. Yes, is the problem. So, yeah, it'd be nice to have a Zykoi in there just to try one out a bit. I'm more. amazed, it's how fast. fast. I'm, I'm amazed at how fast that restarted, yeah, and the startup time when it caught on mm -hmm. like from the time of the ignition when it caught up. Like the restart on a Sweden 240 is about. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. That was fine. I was that was, yeah, was like that was quick. Five, a little longer five, yeah. and it was on. And it like, took a while because I, I just pinched the line feeding the turbine. So I pinched it. It took a few seconds to actually shut off. And then it was about maybe five to seven seconds. But that's a game changer when I think about it. Because mm -hmm. if you're flying low and it goes off, you yeah. have a bubble or whatever, then you have the confidence that you know that you have yeah. time that it's going to restart instead of preparing for a landing. Yeah, well it happened multiple times in Tucson, so <laughs> with that's, different planes, so with yeah. the Rebel Pro and the Super Bandit. Yeah, they go out of yeah. altitude. Out yeah. Out yeah, not. I mean it was no, like 50 off. feet up, oh. but uh, basically you just keep floating and floating and then it turns back on, so. Oh, what, what's his name was flying the, the Bandit mm -hmm. the second time? Yeah, Patrick. Can, he came flying over the top of the deck and all of a sudden, boom! And it just went, you went straight up. <laughs> altitude. Yeah. Straight up in the altitude and you got up there and just <clears throat> dribbled around and all of a sudden started right up. Yeah. I was just like, awesome. But that's the reactions of a cat. I mean, him, his young reactions, remember this, you got reaction time <laughs> still. But man, I was amazed. I was amazed at how fast that restarted. Because mm -hmm. to me, I'd be like, well, where's the wind coming from? Okay, you check the gear, we're gonna put part flaps down. Okay, who's, who's around? Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, if you don't have any other questions, guys, that's it for the live. We're gonna cut it off.
I'm making fun of Katie because she's going like this. Can't see? I can't see. <laughs> she's squinting. Well, how can you read the comments then? I got to go like this now. <laughs> she does have glasses. She just doesn't wear them. All right, guys, that is everything for the, uh, for the live. Thanks so much for tuning in. This has been fun. We're going to be two weeks from now, so that brings us to like three quarters through April. Uh, by then, we'll probably be started on the F-14. We'll have the Rebel Hot probably done. We'll have the BDX probably done. And uh, we'll be starting on the 14 and some other, probably the F-4 as well, too, from Skymaster. That's going to be a fun be one. Flying if it yeah, we could be flying well. as well, for sure. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say, but uh, we'll see you next time.